y'all and welcome to the Crazy Sock Lady YouTube channel. My name is Kay and this is my channel where I share all about my knitting, crocheting, and crafting adventures. Today is Wednesday, September 7th. It's about 10 a.m. I have just finished getting a little bit of things done around the house. Got all the things out here because there's a lot to share with you today. And I'm ready just to dive in. So I've already finished my coffee for this morning, but I hope that you have your coffee or your beverage of choice and your knitting or crocheting, whatever you may be working on, and you're ready to visit for just a little bit. So you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as The Crazy Sock Lady. I do have links right down below this YouTube video in the description box that will have links to where you can find me, links to shops that I talk about, project pages, every thing that I show you that I'm working on or that I finished does have a Ravelry project page that has all details, needle sizes, yarns, links to any patterns, etc. All of that is right there for you. So let's see. Um, first up, before we dive in, because I have a couple finished things to show you, some new cast-ons to show you, I want to make sure that I mention, let me glance at my notes here. Um, Let's talk about Summer Sock Camp. So our third annual Summer Sock Camp did come to a close on August 31st. That was the last day to get your finished pairs of socks entered to be eligible to win prizes. I have not coordinated all the, the winners and drawn all the winners and <laughs> all the things just yet, but I am gonna be working on that over the next couple of weeks and then I will either announce it here. Ooh, there's a squirrel right outside. The squirrels have been going crazy with the, like the temperature has changed just slightly outside. So it's like the squirrels are going crazy getting ready for colder weather. Anyways, um, I will either announce winners here on the podcast episode, not this one, obviously, but an upcoming podcast episode. Um, I will announce them on Instagram as well. So just keep an eye out. We have a lot of winners to announce and I will get to all of those as quickly as I can. We had so many people participate in summer sock camp this year. It definitely seems to be growing each year and it blows my mind how many people come together and knit socks. Maybe they're finding socks for the first time and really finding that love of sock knitting for the first time or making new friends. I've heard so many people say they've made new friends through summer sock camp, um, whether it's someone that they've met that's close to them that they can get together with or a friend across the world. People are just coming together and finding their community with knitting and I love it so much because that is why I'm here and that's why I do all of this, why I do summer sock camp, because I wanna bring knitters together. That's always what's brought me, what has brought me joy with this. And I just can't wait to continue doing all of that through different, different avenues. Of course, we'll have a summer sock camp next year, but yeah. I am just so thankful for the community that has been built here through Crazy Sock Lady and through Summer Sock Camp. And I love hearing that y'all are making friends through Summer Sock Camp and really coming together to knit socks. That's what it's all about for me. I also wanted to mention quickly that we did have a shop update over at Crazy Sock Lady Co. Dot com. We have some new yarn dyers in the shop. We have Solstice Fiber Studio and Suburban Stitcher. And then we also had an update of Pretty Twisted Yarns. So make sure you head over and check those out. While you're there, check out the sales section in the shop. I That's a new section that I've just put up in the shop. Grab anything that you want while it's there, before it's gone, because um, stuff in the shop, it's not gonna be restocked. So make sure you're grabbing things while it's still there. All right, let's chat knitting. I can't wait to show you guys a couple of things. Well, all the things, but really can't wait to show you a couple of things. <laughs> so I had talked last time about how I finished my sea glass. I do not have it on today, which reminds me, I should probably tell you what I am wearing. I am wearing my heart of glass tee. I will link this in the project page below or maybe put it on the screen here. I can't remember the designer's name. I knit this years and years ago. I believe the yarn is Maker's Haven. She no longer dyes yarn, but I'll link the project page and all of that so you can see details. But I love this. I've always said I want to knit another one and I just have never gotten around to it. So it has some gorgeous lace here at the bottom. And the fit is just so great on this. I can't, 
I can't get tall enough for you to see the whole thing, but the fit is so great. It's so light and airy. There is a option that has like three quarter length sleeves. So I would kind of maybe like to do that as well, but I love this. And right now it's like the perfect temperature for this outside. It is not the perfect temperature for <laughs> this sea glass sweater, which is why I am not wearing it today, but it is done and it's off the blocking mats. So I promised I would show you this week. So here it is. Let's give you a close up of the fabric. It is beautiful. So the sea glass sweater is a pattern by Wool and Pine Designs and it uses DK weight. You have your main color, which I used Swish DK in the Dove Heather colorway. It's a yarn by Knit Picks. That's what I used for my main color. And you use that throughout the body of the sweater along with another strand of DK or I used two strands of fingering held together to get a DK weight. So that's what you see here is just scraps. I had some people ask what colorway I used. It is not one colorway, I used fingering weight scraps. So when I was holding it double, I was grabbing two different scraps and holding them together. I kind of went through all of my scraps and minis that I had and picked out pinks, purples, just that kind of color. Anything that had pinks, purples, you can see some had like some blues and different colors in them. But I really tried to stick with mostly pink and purple for color number two. It is going to be for cold weather. <laughs> I'm just envisioning like a, it'll be perfect for a walk outside in cold weather because the fabric is very thick. I followed the pattern exactly other than I did change the cuff. So for this cuff, I can't remember now what length it tells you that you need for the cuff, but I did double that and then folded it down. And then I just took, like left a super, super long waist yarn because I did a sewn bind off. So you need a long one for that. And then after I had done the bind off, I just folded it down and went around and just kind of tacked it down, just looping it through both the bind off edge and the sweater. So that's the only thing I changed. I just thought that would be nice and cozy. Other than that, I followed the pattern exactly. And I love it. So that's my sea glass sweater. I think that was it about that. I know last time I just gave kind of a peek of it because it was still on the blocking mats. It did take a while to dry because like I said, the fabric is pretty thick. The only other thing that I, well, this is the only thing I've finished since the last episode is this pair of socks. These are my delirium socks. This is a colorway by Heidi and Lana that she dyed exclusively for Crazy Sock Lady Co. It was a sock set. Get a close up there of those speckles. Her dyeing is so even and beautiful. Now I did a contrast toe, contrast heel, and of course a contrast pop of collar at the cuff. Y'all know I love doing that. Um, and I do have notes for how I do that on my project page. Basically you just cast on and knit two rounds with a contrast collar, then switch to your main collar, knit one round plain, and then go right back into your ribbing. US one, or no, I think these were nine inch, so they would have been US zero, 64 stitches. Vanilla socks on nine inch, as usual. So that's all the finished things. I have cast on a couple of new things. I am still working on my Mystic Timber socks. There might have been one done last time too, but this is the um, other sock set by Heidi and Lana that we had in the shop, Mystic Timbers. And I'm pretty far on the foot of the second sock now. Again, doing those on nine inch. 
these have been in my purse so that they're kind of what I'm working on when I'm out and about. Let's go through socks first. So I did, I'm trying to remember, I don't think I had cast these on last time, but I was talking about going on a trip, which there is a vlog up of our knitting weekend. You guys were very excited um, for a vlog because it's been ages since I have done one, but there is a vlog up if you want to see a little bit about the weekend. I was so out of practice and just so caught up in the fun of the weekend that I did forget to pick up the camera a lot. So it's a shorter vlog, but you get to see the schoolhouse, which I highly recommend going and checking out the vlog just to see that because it was such a fun and unique place. But I did work on some socks while I was there. So I have these in a bag by Daisy Girl and Company. This is the small size bag. And I think I talked last, talked last time about casting these on and doing two at a time afterthought everything socks. Well, that changed. <laughs> I still did these two at a time. I had these both cast on, but I ended up doing just a regular heel flap and gusset. I'm still gonna try afterthought everything socks and make some changes and it, you know experiment a little bit, but I was so worried that they would not fit Eric or myself because afterthought everything heels typically do not even when I add extra rounds um that's why I was going to experiment and try some different things but anyways I was worried they would not fit and I love this yarn so much that I wanted these to be for both of us and not have to be something I gifted or something that we wore but then it just fit poorly so I still did them two at a time I just did my typical vanilla sock recipe US one, 2.25 millimeter, 40 inch is what I use for two at a time. I'm trying to think if there was anything else about these. Pop of color, per usual. They are so gorgeous. This is Holly Press Fibers. I don't even think I've said the yarn. Holly Press Fibers, this is Dead Marshes. Sock set and Oakum Mount sock set we did have these in the shop but they are sold out we do have some other holly press fibers sock sets in stock though i have cast on the second socks so when i do two at a time i like to do my cuffs separately and then put them on the same needle it really it can be so fiddly when you're trying to do two cuffs like just the cast on and start them out two at a time. So what I recommend, and I do have a tutorial for it, is to do them separately and then put them on the needle and then you can just fly through the rest of it. So they're cast on. I'll work on them here and there, but that's all I've done is get them cast on for the second socks. But the yarns are so gorgeous, but I've gotten distracted as you do. I've gotten distracted with two new sock casts cast ons. So I have just been knitting socks like crazy for everybody at Lock 27, pretty much <laughs> our go-to lunch place. So I knit them for our friend Janet that we have lunch with there a lot. And then I knit them for Taylor, who is usually working when we are there. Then when I was in the other day, I had plans to knit them for someone else as well, um, for Chelsea that works there, but Taylor asked if I would make her daughter a pair of socks. She offered to pay me and I was like, no, you will not pay me. I get so much joy out of knitting them that no, like, mm -mm. So I've cast on socks for Chelsea and for Mavery. Mavery's are not as far as Chelsea's, which is silly because they, these will fly off the needles. She is three. So this is in a bag from Matter Root. Picked this up at New York Sheep and Wool Festival ages ago. Such a pretty bag. I love, you just roll this down to close the top. And then it has, well, if I turn it the right way, <laughs> has a buckle. So for Mavery's, she's only three, so they will not take much yarn at all. I'm tangled, I think. Yep. 
So I just grabbed some leftovers. This was out of a sock set, and then this was a full skein. I can't even remember the colorway names, and I knit with them over the summer. That's silly. I cast on 52 stitches for these. I'm just kind of winging it. I know I've never met her daughter, um, but she said she's very tiny. She told me she wears a size eight shoe size. So I cast on 52. I, when my kids were three, I, d I was not knitting socks at that time. So <laughs> I'm kind of winging it. I have knit them for my niece, I guess when she was probably that age, but it's been a while. So I'm just winging it. I did 52. We'll see how it goes. That's all I've got done. And these are really gonna fly off the needles once I work on them. Right now I'm distracted by working on Chelsea's socks. I have these in a bag from Barley Pearls. And I am using this yarn that I've held on to for ages because I love the colorway so much. And I know for one, Mavery's favorite color is purple. I asked Chelsea's favorite color is purple because I've asked her before. So Chelsea probably knows she's getting socks. This will probably be no surprise to her. <laughs> but this is the Nitpicks Felici in the Goth Kitty colorway. This is a self-striping yarn. It comes in 50 gram um, skeins from Knit Picks. And I have just held on to this for so long because I, I love purple, obviously, and this is just beautiful, but I just thought it would be so perfect for Chelsea. I am on the heel flap. I'm doing these socks, Magic Loop, Mavery's as well, US1, 2.25 millimeter. I've cast on 64 stitches for Chelsea's and I've done 40 rounds on the leg for hers. Not far at all into the heel flap. I just started that this morning. All right, that's it for sock whips. I did bring over my wallop cowl because that has been getting a lot of knitting in the evening. I think right now I am on day 17 of my advent calendar that I'm using. I am using the Homespun House advent calendar from 2021. And the wallop cowl, I will have the pattern linked in the project page that's linked below. I did this last year um, throughout Vlogmas with a Moon Glow advent for myself. And this one that I'm making now is a gift for my mother-in-law. During Vlogmas last year, she always commented, like she would message me about the homespun house advent calendar and how pretty she thought that day's color was. So I thought it would be very fitting to use the advent calendar for a gift for her. So her birthday is this month. So I'm hoping to have this done by her birthday. It is very long now. So this is knit in a tube and then you attach the ends. And then my one from last year, like right now it's not as long as it will be, but you can twist it up. I can twist the one from last year, I think three times and it's like tighter or two times and it's, you know, a little looser, but yeah, it's pretty long, so I'll show you here. I did modify the pattern slightly. I do the eyelets every color change. I have notes on my project page for that. I'm using 16 inch Chalgu circulars. All my needles that I'm using are Chalgu red lace. And I'm using a US three, I believe. Nope, US four, 3.5 millimeter. So yeah, I'm on day 17. And just kind of trying to work on it in the evenings. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I. Definitely think I will do another one of these during Advent this December because it's such a fun 
pattern to do super mindless and that's such a manageable like it's such a smaller section that that's so manageable to do a day I, I think oh gosh so each section there are 20 gram minis each each section is taking about 10 grams and with my leftovers I am doing a granny square blanket so the wallop cow is just fingering weight my granny square Square blanket that I'm doing I'm holding the fingering weight double so once I finish the mini I grab both ends of the mini and hold it double to make granny squares and you can see I'm just changing colors once it runs out I just change to the next one I've got five attached so far And I'm using Knit Picks Swish DK in the Dove Heather, the same thing that was my main collar on my sea glass. Same thing I've used for many projects. <laughs> I love this collar. The yarn is so affordable. So Swish DK Dove Heather is what I'm using for the last round of the squares. And I'm doing a join as you go. And I do, I have a written pattern linked for the granny square and then a video tutorial for the join as you go in the project page i have one more square going that is not completed yet i think i'm on the last round of this one i'm using my favorite crochet hooks tulip atimo a four millimeter. I have these linked in my Amazon storefront below if you're having trouble finding those. I know they can be a little hard to find, but Amazon does have them. And so that's that. There are 24 minis, so I am very close. Depending on how long we're sitting and watching TV after dinner or, you know, like if we have to run the kids somewhere or, you know, whatever the evening holds. I don't always get a ton of work on it in the evenings, but I can get like one to two minis done because I am stopping and then adding the leftover to the granny square blanket. So I should have it done well before her birthday. All right. Last project is in a bag by um, bags by awesome granny. And this is my lace and fade boxy. This is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli, a sweater pattern. And I am using Moonglow Yarn Co. She has sets for these, like kits on her website. Here is her logo. Have her linked down below. And it's all pinks and it's so beautiful. So there's all the pinks. And then there's the main color and the sweater does have mohair sections. So it's starting to actually look like a sweater now. It was looking a little crazy because of the way the construction starts. It's nothing difficult, but it just was not looking like a sweater at first. So let's see, this is the front. And I've got the first lace mohair section done. And then I'm working on, this is color one. Now I'm working on color two, the first pink stripe. Look how beautiful that is. I have never worked, I've worked with mohair holding it with fingering weight and liked it. Um, that was for a hat and then I did a round and round cowl using the leftovers from the hat, I believe, of the mohair. And that was beautiful as well. But I've never held it by itself and I just love how delicate it looks. So I'm very excited. I was so happy to finally get this because the first sections that you're doing 
for the front and the back it's worked flat there's no seaming but it, it is worked flat and then you eventually do start working in the round and i am so glad to be working in the round <laughs> so very glad um so i'm following the pattern exactly using the needle sizes recommended and everything using chow gu red lace as usual and i think i'm doing a size three i do have it on my project page so that is that oh i do i should say i have all these markers and you may be thinking what it, what are all those for so i have these markers and i obviously do not need them right now because it's just straight knitting but i need them for the lace section so i'm just leaving them throughout the non-lace sections so that i don't i don't have to take them out and replace them every single time okay <laughs> so my battery just died on my camera so i have pulled out a new camera that i got um for vlogging i got more of like a compact camera let's see if i can figure it out here yeah i got more of a compact camera for vlogging so we're gonna try this one out and see how it does for the podcast my plan is to keep with the camera i was on before for the podcast and then use this one for vlogging out and about but we'll see how it goes because my battery died all right mail stuff i've purchased that's where we are at now and then we do have some giveaway winners to announce so stay tuned for that i when we went to maslin ohio up that way we made some stops along the way and one of those stops was at 614 knit studio you can see a little bit of that shop over in the vlog but i found some goodies to come home with me as one does so i bought some yarn of course so let's go through those. So the first one, this is a Lang Yarns Super Socks. The color number, there's a lot of numbers on the side here. I wonder which one is like the actual color number. 21114 maybe? I don't know. Very pretty though, kind of reminded me of like a rainbow. So that's the first one. And then I, they were, they had their stitch together studio yarn on sale because she's no longer wholesaling. So I found this one on her 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon called Helter Skelter. So pretty. I found a couple Madeline Tosh on their Twist Light, which is, I believe it's a 7525. Yes, 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon Blend. This is the Road Less Traveled colorway. And what up, beach? <laughs> so that's the yarn that I found at 614 Knit Studio. I did find some other goodies. I got some Little Progress Keepers by Pearl Smith. I've seen these around and I've never purchased any before. I think they're so beautiful. And then these are from AD Knits and they're just little snowflakes, like bronze snowflakes. And I thought that was so cute. Not sure how well you can see that. She also carries tuft woolens. So I did pick up a couple tuft woolens. This is their vanilla almond. And then I picked up a chapstick that is sangria. She 
she also so a while back i remember knitting the card game coming out and she had those in stock and said that they are no longer in print which i didn't realize and i had never picked up the game before so i did pick it up we didn't end up playing it this weekend but i told everyone they are required to play it next trip that we go on so knitting the card game says the yarn is real the patterns are real the knitting is implied so it should be fun i think what else that was all i picked up on the trip i have received some things in the mail so i did receive a surprise package from a viewer brooke who just wanted to say thank you for all of the tutorials and for summer sock camp etc she sent me over two adorable little candy cane or not candy cane not candy cane candy corn <laughs> uh do i have christmas on the brain i don't know i'm ready for halloween though i can tell you that so um candy corn progress keepers that i thought were absolutely adorable i can't wait to use those i'm itching to knit with all the fall and halloween yarns i got a couple of gifts from friends so my friend Jenny picked up some yarn when she went to the beach recently at a yarn store there. This mini and full skein, I was going to say, are they the same? Dyer, yes. It is by Lonesome Pine Yarn Works. This one is called Poppy. This is their 75-25 fingering weight. And then the full skein is sand and sea. And you can kind of see their label on here. It's covered on the other one by the price sticker, but. I got a birthday gift from my friend Lindsay in the mail. We've been talking, she had knit up the Fear Street um, colorway by Bumblebee Acres, and we were talking about how good it was, and I used to love those Fear Street books. So she sent me this for my birthday. Here's Bumblebee Acres logo. And the main color is Fear Street, and the mini skein is Cursed. I just think that's so pretty again i'm just wanting to knit up like all the spooky fall yarns so i might have to cast that on soon just a couple more things um i received my row one minis in the mail for september and my september yarnable so if you get these and you have not received them and you don't want it to be spoiled maybe look away for just a bit so the row one that's a mini skein subscription service and it is so fun it comes in this bag every month and there's always a paper that tells you all about the yarn dyer it has the list of the mini skeins that's getting really blown out <laughs> the colorway names for each mini skein etc so this month's dyer for september is so happy jane and i'm really excited because i've never tried out their yarn before there's always a sweet treat in there it was a sucker and why it did eat it so i do not have that to show <laughs> but there's always a little progress keeper or stitch marker can you see that it is a little singer sewing machine don't think it's focusing too well on that but then you have your mini skeins they are all labeled with the yarn dyer and the colorway which i think is great because then you can always just toss them in a basket and be able to tell exactly what it is later and i'm obsessed with these colors they are so pretty With my row one, I've been doing a granny square blanket, holding them double, and it really uses up the yarn. So I'm really excited about that. September Yarnable. Ooh, and speaking of, so I've been doing these on the podcast here for a while, but if you want to look back at previous Yarnables, I do have an unboxing 
playlist for that so that you can easily find them. But they are open to new members starting the 8th. So today is the 7th. I don't know that this will go up on the 7th or the 8th. If it goes up today, they are having a giveaway over at the Yarnable website. I will have the link down below. And they're giving away one October box for you and for your crafting, knitting, crocheting BFF. So you would each get a Yarnable box for October. So you can sign up for that over on the website if this goes up before it closes, but I don't know that it will. If not, they are gonna be open to new members starting on the 8th through the 10th, I believe. <laughs> and don't forget, I always have a coupon code down below for you guys. It is $5 off of your first box if you use the code sock lady. If you head over and it doesn't show that they are open, they do have an option to join the wait list. You just put your email in and then they will notify you if any spots open up that you can sign up. So yeah, again, if you haven't received this, don't want to be spoiled, look away for a bit. This is the September Yarnable subscription box. I choose to get the one skein of fingering weight. You can choose to get one or two skeins of fingering weight or DK weight. You always get some fun little extras. They're always in a little bag like this. There's a card in here that tells you about the month. This says, Laughs More, Worry Less is brought to you by Bonfires, Toasted Marshmallows, and your favorite cozy sweatshirt. Tells you about your extras that are included. Has a scratch off discount code that's good for the month that you receive the box in. And the extras are so fun. It's like so perfect timing. Summer Sock Camp came to a close and now it's just like, okay, I want to sit by, like the weather's cooling down a bit. It's like sit by a cozy fire. And this is all about s'mores. So we have a little bag, which I cannot wait to use for little notions and like a sweater project bag or something. I think it is so cute. It's got two zippers. The fabric is just adorable says it is a moisture resistant bag that was manufactured for Yarnable. Then we have a s'mores dip mix. I didn't realize this was a dip mix. Oh my gosh, that's so fun. I thought it, I was just looking at it and I kind of thought it was like a hot chocolate thing at first. That's what I get for not reading it when I first opened this. It says combine bag contents with eight ounces of cream cheese and eight ounces of whipped topping and blend together, chill for two to three hours, serve with animal or graham crackers. That's awesome. I can't wait to do this. That's so much fun. Okay, then there is a vanilla Mars Halo mug topper by XO Marshmallow says that it is a gourmet marshmallow mug topper. I have never seen anything like this, <laughs> but that's super fun that you would just put it inside of your mug. That's fun. And now for the yarn, my favorite part. This one, the colorway is laughs more, worry less. And it's beautiful. As always, there's their Yarnable logo. But look at that. So, so beautiful. I can't wait to cast this one on too. I love it. This box I was gonna say this box did not disappoint, but I feel like Yarnable never disappoints, but this one is stunning. Okay, I think the last thing, making sure I've showed you everything that's laying here, is that I've gotten is we did get a bag for a giveaway. So we're gonna do a giveaway for this episode. Um, I'll show the bag, announce the details, and then we'll announce the winners from the last episode. So this bag is from Cabana Berry Designs. It is so pretty. Look how pretty that fabric is. There's the inside. It's a 
drawstring box bottom. Nice and squishy. And you can find her over on Instagram. It's Seaberry Designs. And then she does have an Etsy shop that I will link down below, Cabana Berry Designs. So for that one, we'll do a giveaway. This episode, you just have to comment down below. Um, type her, her shop name, Cabana Berry Designs somewhere in your comment and that will enter you to win. You can comment anything, but just include that little phrase of words <laughs> in there um, so I can filter those out. It makes it a little bit easier to make sure you want to enter the giveaway. Cause sometimes you comment, but you're like, I don't really like what the giveaway is for. You know, not everyone likes everything. So then you just have to to comment that if you do want to enter to win the pack. The giveaway from last time, so I did draw winners. Let me pull up our two winners. So our winners, last time we did a giveaway for the Barley Pearls Project bags. There were two and then two skeins of yarn, one for each bag. So it was like two different giveaways. The yarn was from Arcane Fiberworks. So our winners are Carol Burden and Pamela on the farm. So congratulations, Carol and Pamela. If you guys would just contact me at crazysockladypodcast at gmail.com. Give me your shipping information so that I can get that shipped out to you. And then I'll get that sent out ASAP. Okay, I think that's it. Looking, just glancing at like the things I wanted to make sure I talked about. Um, just that Summer Sock Camp prize winners will be announced soon. I'll get to that as quickly as I can. It does just take a bit on top of everything else, um, just life and other, other work stuff uh, to get everything coordinated. But as soon as I get all that done, I will get the winners announced here on YouTube and on Instagram as well. Shop update, sale section, grab things before they're gone if you're wanting anything because once it's all gone, it is gone over there. And then just that Yarnable is open. I don't want you guys to miss that because so many times people will see the Yarnable I show and be like, oh, I want to sign up, but they're, it says they're not open to new members. So you really, they're not open that often to new members. So you want to make sure you get in when you can if it's something that you're interested in getting. It's just such a fun surprise to get that yarn in the mail, I think, if it's something you can do. And I've been getting it for years and absolutely love it. And I'm really looking forward to more knitting time coming coming in November um, to be able to work through some of some of the yarn. All right, I think that's it. Life stuff, what has been going on? So last time we were getting ready to go to the My Chemical Romance concert, I believe it was so good, so good. I absolutely loved it. Wyatt said it was the best concert he's ever been to. And I kind of have to agree, even though I Gosh, I hate to say that because Mumford and Sons, I love them. I've seen them a couple of times, but this was such a good show. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. It was great to experience that with Wyatt and just have those moments with him. I'm really trying to, I feel like this past year, I've just gotten caught up in a lot of the hustle and bustle of life and trying to keep up with everything. And I really am trying to refocus, slow down, because gosh, what I love is like just a simple, slower life. That's what I love and that's what I've really been craving to get back to. So it was really nice to just have that night with just him and make memories with him. And it, it just reminded me of why I'm, I'm wanting to slow down and refocus because you know, our kids are only in our home for so long and then they're out in the world and my kids are already so they're so independent and as they get older you know they don't they don't need you as much and they don't want you around as much <laughs> they might still love you but they don't want you around as much so i'm trying to really soak in the time that we have before the kids are out of the house austin's already a sophomore so i'm just like oh, where is the time went so yeah it was just such a special evening with him i tried not to embarrass him too much <laughs> but i love that band so I did enjoy myself. Um, and they played his 
absolute favorite song by them. He didn't think they were going to play it. The last song of the encore starts up and I realize it's his favorite song and I look over at him and just the look on his face. I was like, it made the concert ticket price worth it. The late night not getting home until almost 1 a.m. worth it. It was so awesome. So yeah, it was a great night. Um, I can't remember what else has been going on. I feel like I need to take notes because I get on here and I'm like, what have we even been doing? Mostly normal life stuff. <laughs> uh, the kids just are always busy. Austin's always going to something at the high school, hanging out with friends, playing basketball. And right now we're just their, their chauffeurs, you know? That's, that's the point in life that we're at. We're running the kids everywhere to all of their activities. <laughs> What have we been watching? So we have been watching Only Murders in the Building. I th we're still on ep or not episode, season one. Um, so we've been watching that. It's super cute and funny. We've been watching The Devil in Ohio. We just started that. Eric thinks it's a little corny. Some of it slightly is a little corny, but I'm really enjoying it. I like those kind of shows. So uh, Only Murders in the Building, I believe is on Hulu. And then The Devil in Ohio is on Netflix. So that's kind of what we've been watching. I've been trying to get caught up on Grey's Anatomy because I am a couple seasons behind. So I'm trying to get caught up on that. Anything else we've been watching? Oh, we started watching The Patient. That's a Hulu. I think it's on FX, so you can watch it on Hulu. It has Steve Carell in it. There might be three episodes out now. There was only two. So we've watched the first two. I need to check and see if there's a third episode out yet. But I think that's kind of all that we've been watching. Just trying to enjoy the last. This last weekend was pretty rainy. So it wasn't like a good go out with the top back or anything on the Jeep and enjoy a nice ride. Hopefully this weekend the weather will be a little nicer and we can do that. There's an event at a winery nearby, like a Jeep event. We went to it last year and it was fun. So I'm hoping we'll be able to go to that again and get a, a ride in before the weather really starts to cool down. Although I can't wait for going out in the Jeep and needing a sweatshirt. That's like perfect, perfect. I love Jeep rides all summer long, but when you get to go for a drive and you have on jeans and a sweatshirt, that's, like, that's a great Jeep ride. And you're not just like burning up every time the, the vehicle stops. I think that's it though. I'm starting to ramble about random things. So <laughs> don't forget to comment for the giveaway down below. If you are a giveaway winner from last time, be sure to get in touch with me and I will talk to y'all soon. Until then, happy knitting. Bye.